two schools to come together and kind of work together um, and kind of drop the rivalry for a little bit. So we are planning a Make-A-Wish fundraiser where both schools will be competing against one another to raise the most funds for Make-A-Wish, but ultimately it's all going to the same same program, and we're having a color run, and we want to you know broadcast that, get the word out so that people sign up to run and all that goes towards Make-A-Wish. It's a great cause. When is the color run, and where, and how do you enlist? <laughs> it is April 29th um, at 4.30, and it's at Musselman High School on their cross-country course. And how far will you run? I won't be running, but it is a 5K. <laughs> Smart move. <laughs> yeah. You can run, though. I mean, I can. You played soccer yeah. and lacrosse. Oh, yeah. You can oh, yeah. Run. I can run, but t yeah. today I'm, I won't be running. You'll be day. organizing. I'll be organizing along with Addie, yeah. Yeah. How much do you guys hope to raise? Uh, we're hoping to raise $5,000 collectively mm -hmm. between the two schools. Um, so, yeah. And, and why the Make-A-Wish Foundation? Um. Addie kind of introduced it to me. I'll let her kind of go on with that one. So our school is a Jostens Renaissance School, which is just this organization that um, centers their schools around um, helping kids, not just for athletics, but for um, their grades and their attendance and things like that. So they have this global conference in Florida every summer. And I got to go this past summer with my school and this past school did the same thing with Make-A-Wish where they had two rival schools. And basically this conference is just to steal ideas from other schools. So that's just what we did. Oh, well, that's a good thing to steal. Yeah. Right? If you're going to take something, yeah. that's a great cause. Mm -hmm. Right? Mr. Gilstrap. In the news this morning when we were, mm -hmm. you know, we're promoting this, uh, the, the Make-A-Wish fundraisers, there's the color run. Mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you what that is. And then there's one that's called egg rob's yard <laughs> which is i don't want that the real phrase to be on a sound bite with mm -hmm. me what what is what do those mean uh so yeah so the color run is just going to be a 5k typical race but instead of just kind of running through the like the path you have people throwing color at you so you'd wear like a white t-shirt and by the end of the race you're kind of colored covered in color um egg like my yard what chalk um, it's like a yeah like a powdered paint mm -hmm. type thing okay yeah so just kind of add some fun into the race and then Egg My Yard was something that Olivia Travis started because she was Miss West Virginia's Outstanding Teen. She has a very, very lengthy resume with all of that pageant stuff. She's so impressive. Um, but she started that, and it was basically where kids just become the Easter Bunny. So we packaged eggs. I think there was in total like 1,000 eggs possibly. Um, and wow, then right. we just go to different houses. I think there's about 30 houses, and you just – basically created Easter egg hunt for the kids. It was it was a really cool oh, experience. Good. Yeah. Egg, egging means something different to me. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought who would volunteer for this? Yeah, no, it, it, okay. it does sound a little different, but at the end of the day it's it's awesome. I think that says something about Mr. Gilstrap's youth with what he's alluding <laughs> to right yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, Make a Wish Foundation is a national foundation. Mm -hmm. Uh is are the local subsidiaries the five thousand dollars is it going to national, is it going to stay local or what will happen? It'll be going directly towards a wish for one kid. For one kid. So one kid, a yeah. local kid? Uh, we're hoping it's local, yes. Okay. But do you have a say-so on who it would be? I don't believe so. Um, they'll pick it for us, but we have a regional advisor, so it'll be in the Morgantown area to us. So anywhere between that will be where the kid will is living. So. Okay. Now, it's generally a kid uh, that is uh, uh, having medical problems, severe medical mm -hmm. problems. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. mm -hmm. What kind of support are you getting around the schools for this? I would say we're having a lot of support. Um, we're trying to kind of pass off the fundraiser options to all the clubs within the school, so that way we get everyone involved, and it's not just like a student body or a student government um, fundraiser. So we have Science National Honor Society doing stuff, National Honor Society, Tri and Music Honor Society. There's a lot of clubs that are trying to participate, so that it's like school wide and not just one club mm -hmm. oriented. We were talking about the post COVID social issues in in school uh, just a few minutes ago. From your perspective, things have been normal for, what, about a year, give or take? Does it feel normal again? Does it feel like a real high school experience? I would say it was. Um, our leadership class at Musselman, we worked hard last year to kind of halfway through the years when we stopped wearing masks. So I think when we hit that point, we tried to get back to the way things were, but it still wasn't like a full um, school year. So this year, we really tried to work hard in the summer to, like, plan out each of our events and go back in time to see like what we used to do and how to get it back up there and improve on the events that we've done in the past as well. And this was just an event that we added to our schedule. Mm -hmm. 
Are your fellow students anxious to join clubs and show choirs and track teams and, and all that? Is that that feel like it, it back to normal? Uh I would I would say it's it's back to normal for the most part. I, would, I don't think it's too much anxious or too much worry about COVID anymore. Thankfully, I mean it was it was hard for us definitely, um, but yeah, I would say it's back to normal. Chloe talked to us about what the Good Time Show Choir did during COVID, Addy, to try to keep them involved and make things as normal as possible. Uh, not that you could be normal at all during those times, but uh, what about at Musselman High School? What was it like for you going through that, and what happened to help alleviate some of your issues and, and, and stay part of the community? Um, what we tried to do in our leadership class was we – took our ideas that we have done in the past so we did like spirit weeks and stuff and that's a big thing at our school like we go all out in our spirit weeks so we try to take our um, big events that we've done in the past and kind of just alter them in ways that we could still be able to do them in under those circumstances so for our spirit weeks we had we still had them but like you still had to wear your mask and stuff and then kids that we're um, or click they could where they worked online they were able to still participate they could send in their pictures of how they dressed up online or even on their zoom calls they were dressed up so we tried to take our ideas and just kind of alter them in ways that we could still be able to do them but it just wasn't up to our standard that we usually do them when when this happened I can remember lots of discussions in March of 2020 about your generation because I have my sons are 28 and 25 now but they grew up with phones right mm, yes and it was it's not uncommon once you guys hit a certain age and i'm sure you're kind of at that age now although you guys might not maybe you don't do this but a lot of kids in your age group do where you could have four kids at a table no one's talking everybody's doing this and they might even be texting to each other at the table without actually lifting their heads and talking so when this started and it was well the kids are gonna have to go home for a couple weeks then we'll see from there but nobody really believed it would just be two weeks i thought as did many others, that, well, this generation is uniquely qualified to handle a situation like this because they communicate so much over their phones anyway, right? Yeah. But it didn't really work out that way. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I feel like since we were always accustomed to using our phones, being online, it kind of made the transition a little smoother than had it been, you know, years in the past where that technology didn't exist. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I mean, it was months. It was almost a year of, you know, going back and forth between not seeing people and then seeing people and then you know wearing masks it was still very hectic and very uh stressful for a lot of kids myself included it was not a, the best time mm -hmm. um so definitely glad that it's transitioning out of that Addy? um i think it was just hard because you think about yourself and you think about the people that came ahead of you that didn't have to didn't have all these restrictions restrictions and you saw like the things that they were able to do in their high school career and you kind of weren't able to do the same so i think that made it even more difficult knowing what you were missing out on instead of just like you know being like upset at home but you kind of knew what you missed like you knew you were missing a homecoming a prom and these were things that is it's important in your high school career so i think that was the most difficult part did you both get set back academically um I don't think I necessarily did I tried to stay on top of my schoolwork but I do know there's a lot of kids that you know fell back and that's why schools transitioned into the eight periods the block scheduling so that mm -hmm. people could have credit recovery so we're going back um, Berkeley County Schools is going back to the seven periods now that COVID's kind of next year done. or yes. they've done it now already. next year next, next year, year. Okay. Yeah. I think during when a lot of things were online it was basically on you if you kind of put in the time if you got on your zoom classes to do the work and stuff so i think if you set yourself a standard that you got on your zoom classes every day you turned in your work and stuff and you kept up on your academics then you would stay kind of at your level and academically what did cade tell you it was like a college going through that um, I think Cade's hardest part was he was a 2022 grad, so missing his graduation was really hard on him, and he loves, you know, public speaking and stuff, so he was really upset about not doing, like, a graduation speech and stuff like that, but the first year at college, you know, you're still, like, trying to adjust to, um, 
not li like living in a new place and then you weren't able to like go out with anybody or meet new people so basically he got really close with just the people in his dorm and stuff because that's all you were allowed to see so he was kind of like a freshman two years like being able to go out after his during his sophomore year so did you just tell me Cade graduated from college no, no, no. High school. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Say, so, wow, that kid's smart. He goes to college in like two years. Wow. That was, that's pretty impressive. Uh, you're you're going to graduate this uh, year in another, what, month and a half or so. Uh, what? We have board members who listen to this program. I'll put you on the spot here because you're two leaders in your community. What would you tell them about improving the high school experience? What can they do next? What can they do to take it to the next level? Oh, gosh. Academically, socially, activity-wise, whatever you'd like to address? I don't know. I don't know either. <laughs> That's a we'll big wait question. here quietly. <laughs> no. <laughs> it is. It's a big question it because you have to think back of like, you know, you are two people who excelled in all aspects of, of high school. So to you, you might think, hey, you know what? As far as I knew, everything I needed was there. What about some of your classmates? What do you think they need? Um, I think maybe increased communication could benefit. Um, getting the word out about, you know, for seniors, graduation scholarships, um, all of that stuff, it's its a lot to take on. It's a lot of things that you've never encountered before. Um, so I think increased communication on all levels between all the grades and, and, and the school and the county, all of that could really benefit students, you know, moving into the future. Um, I know that's something that I probably would have enjoyed or, mm -hmm. you know, benefited from if it was a little, little better. Um, that's my experience. That's what I would say. I mean, I, I agree with Chloe, and I'm going to, like, kind of carry off her. She... I feel like guidance into the next steps could be more beneficial. I feel like once we we hit graduation, it's kind of all of high school is kind of just prep for graduation instead of prepping for our future. So, you know, giving us opportunities to um, not like look for different career opportunities, look at different colleges and the application process and scholarships like that, she said, I think would be beneficial to us if we had more of that. Now, when I was in high school, that was the job of the guidance counselors. Mm -hmm. Is that not what they do anymore, or is it? It is. I think part of the issue is we're moving into a very electronic universe, and so a lot of things that you see are being posted on, like, Instagram accounts and all that. And so us younger kids, that's what we're used to, but the older generations that are, like, teaching us and that are um, – trying to instill that in us they're not necessarily as up to date and so we're like it's just like a disconnect between um generations and, and what we use to communicate and i think that's something that could possibly you know if that came wrapped itself around and came full circle i think that would be very very beneficial got about a minute left to wrap up the make a wish foundation event april the 29th for me you want to do it um, just like a reminder, we have our Make-A-Wish week coming up. Ways that members of the community can donate is we are going to link. We have websites that have our goals and how much we have raised so far. And they'll be on the Musselman High School homepage and the Martinsburg High School homepage. So people can go on and donate and also look out on social media for the different events that our clubs are hosting. And our big color run is going to be the 29th at Musselman High School at 4.30. Well done, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Chloe Thomas, Addie Miller, and maybe we see you again before you graduate. That's a right. good possibility. I feel like I've been here a good bit recently. One more, like I said, one more punch and you get a free sandwich. <laughs> I didn't even have to use my GPS to get here today. No. <laughs> Easy. Hey, 9.57, final minute next. Stay, stay where you are. We'll be right back. <laughs> 